The Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament 7x7 seven seven Ages. We are starting our empires. We have three new empires on the board, and each of them is a threat to a different player. So let's go over who has joined us. I don't, I don't know where this tree is supposed to go. Um, okay, so first of all, Cowboy, he has been scoring three per turn off these Plains Americans because they are the only one, the only Americans. Um, we have new Americans now, and they are the Toltecs Aztecs. Runt has placed them in North America. Now they have a they have a distinct advantage over the Plains Americans in that they start off here on the progress track. The Plains Americans are stuck here. They haven't advanced at all because they have no one to trade with, and we have our our wonky. If you don't have the scientific advantage rules you don't advance whereas everyone else does um, everyone else is able to through trading and progressing they haven't been close to anyone so they haven't been able to trade they also aren't able to to use boats or horses because they're unable to trade with people with boats or horses so they're stuck back here with these two <laughs> unit types that's what they have whereas runts um, Aztecs are able to use these and these here as well which are about twice as strong as the other types. So she's she's horning in on him. She's going to be able to score what? She only scores one on America. So competing for her is less important than competing for him. Um, he gets two on having the Americas, and plus he scores uh, over taking land from a more uh, advanced empire. So it might actually be he could make it work for him. Maybe. I don't know. They're kind of spread out. He would have to abandon some territory in order to get enough forces to take anything from her. But maybe he can trade and have them advance. We'll see what he decides to do. Um, then, what else happened? Well, the first actually new empire was right here. Little Red placed the Satavahana. Satavahana, I think. It's maybe how it's pronounced. I really don't know how it's pronounced. Right here um, in Palava. And that is going to, that is going to be some competition for Giraffes Harappans who have been scoring off of India for I don't even know how long. Um, should be interesting, should be interesting. He has the advantage of just kind of being more concentrated really. She has the age advantage and the greater resource advantage. I don't know how long he'll be able to hold on there. But it might work for him nicely uh, to have the support of the Southeast Asians. Honestly, he just didn't have a better option. Um, he has some future plans with the cards he has. He had three different empires he could have started. Those were the best. Um, his own area in Siam is now being contended by the Siamese here, Flush. Now this, this could be rather important because as you may recall, um, Flush and Little Red are competing to see who is going to be in second to last place uh, by the time someone gets here. Now these markers haven't been moving. They might this turn. We'll see. Um, so what happens in Southeast Asia could be very important. The Chams are uh, Little Red's most consistent scorer. Right? They, they score, they've been scoring him two. Um, if they lose their homeland they're going to be scoring zero. Um, if he can get their money back up though then he can score more. It's going to be hard though uh, just producing money when he's when he has to contend with uh, more invaders, he just uh, scared off the Javanese here last turn, which Runt was uh, controlling only to have Flush jump in right in Siam, which is his elephant space. So we're gonna have to start off with a conflict there to see what happens. Um, most likely Flush is gonna win, but how is he gonna win? I made a cool table in a notebook somewhere um, that will tell us how to spend those victory dice. All right, let's get to that had some calculations to do on this one. Um, Little Red does not get the frontline value of these chariots because uh, Flush had an elephant and the elephant takes that away. So that, that subtracted some from uh, Little Red. Little Red used a Vizier card which let him take the top card uh, from the discard pile which happened to be um, outflanked here. So that's going to divide Flush's, Flush's forces by two giving him uh, 12 dice or I think he yeah, had 12 dice, to, um, to Little Red's 4 dice. So, let's see what happens here. On the old table, that would be a 4 to 1. So let me sort this, and then I'll come back. 
All right, we had a four to one odds, and we got four to one in the die pools there. Uh, Little Red had a pretty decent roll, but it it wasn't enough. I mean, Flush still had just tons, tons left when it all shook out. So what did he get from Little Red? He he just took care of two of his units, got killed them, and then um, took some money. Nothing super exciting. Here's a little chart I made. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, I was distracted. My wife was talking to me while I was doing it. And so I um, there might have been some things I even left out. I don't know if these numbers are even the best numbers. Um, as you can see here, he wasn't able to get that much out of beating this small force. But I guess, a, you know, that makes sense. A bigger battle you would be able to get more out of, right? Because your victory pool would be larger. So maybe that maybe that works. did my first trade using the um, dice system from... What's the name of the game? How we came to live here, as opposed to just trading cards. It was fun. It was a. I, I like that. There's a little bit more at stake. You can get more out of it. Um, at the end of the trade, Melky. It was Melky's uh, English trading with the Romans. They ended up winning out, um, and as a result, we're able to take one of the Romans' cards, this trading post from them, which I thought kind of made sense. Then you could do that. You could outdeal them. So along with their. Uh, double and they they got to move twice on the progression track and so that should put them here they're tied with the cowboy um they also got to take from giraffes romans the han are working on totally eliminating the taang here in the heartland of china interesting results it was an 11 to 4 uh strength diff ratio uh, in favor of the Han, but it went down to about 50-50 for the dice. This is their victory pool, so um, this is what the Han ended up with. This is what the Taang. I mean, obviously, the Taang, all, all Cowboy has to do is just choose to get rid of that unit, and the Taang are, are discarded. We just saw the Harappans move, and I just wanted to comment, poor Giraffe, her Harappans, which have been an old standby for her, are in in a, in a rather in anxiety-inducing position. Um, they have India, these new this new empire right in the heart. Strong empire, okay? I mean, it's got quite a lot of strength points built up here. Um, she's also having to deal with the Han, who have just reinforced the border uh, between Tibet and this area here. And then um, also, you know, Little Red has another empire, the, the Chams, right over here. And and then, to make matters worse, she has the burgeoning uh, juggernaut, the Phoenicians, who just had this huge pr production with, with lots of knights and whatnot over over on this side. So she has she, she was going to do a maneuver just to kind of fill out India after, after that disease that happened last turn. Uh, but now she's finding she's just having to shift around a lot of troops to try and get some even coverage. Because there's really nowhere, nowhere safe for her to go. One rule I haven't really talked about because it hasn't come up a lot in this game is that if you have, uh, I think, more than double of the the units in the defending region, you can just bypass it. You don't have to, you don't have to um, stay and fight. So she even has to kind of defend her her interior here because otherwise they can just push right through. Luckily, she was just able to make use of this rare conjunction to get a production action right after her maneuver. Um, right, right card for the right time. So she's feeling a bit better now. She's got quite a large stack, and that's going to be really hard on Little Red um, to try and force through all of this. I mean, she's got some strong units in there. She's got some knights. She has an elephant. Whew. Little Red's in a similar position that Giraffe was in, only he doesn't have that special card, so he's going to just have to deal with it. Uh, he didn't really even have a lot of shifting he could do. Um, so instead he's going to just send some boats over here to attack, uh, attack Giraffe's forces. He would like to attack her here as well, but he really can't afford the units. Um, right now he's, he's got he's to play a defensive game. He wanted to be able to just wipe flushes people out, but his forces just aren't strong enough. There, there are a lot of weaker units that he has, whereas Flush has some, some strong swordsmen and catapults there. Um, but here he, he's probably got a good chance of success. He's four to, or he's five to two. Melky has been devious as the assassins. He um, made a peace treaty with um, the Phoenicians here, and then immediately tried to assassinate William Wallace. He failed. 
but now he's kind of surrounded by this mighty Phoenician Empire, and they can't do anything to him unless they can somehow get rid of the peace treaty. I'm not sure if there's a way to do that. Uh, so he's pretty safe and sound. I can just com continue to attempt to assassinate to get points that way. He also made himself... Oh, no, he didn't. Never mind. Runs Egyptians have just rained holy fire down on... on well, not really her, her enemies, just other players, I guess. Um, I decided to no longer, just to try and get some money to circulate out of people's hands, it no longer protects people. It no longer acts as um, wreaths. Uh, we just need need more money flowing so that we can get more cards going and just get the economy rolling again. So hopefully people will now start using the money to um, buy materials for things. So here's what she did. First she did a barracks revolt. Uh, in India here for the Harappans. So as you see, they have a lot fewer units in these three spaces. That's because they fought each other, and now they're reduced. Not these th these three spaces, yeah. The elephants stomped on some horses. Um, then she made a flood going right here through the Finns area, and then some fires, in, uh, I think, starting in Burgundy, I think. I, it's hard to tell. There's so many chits, and I... I lost my tweezers, and I don't really want to try and dig it out to see what the name is. Um, so really hit Giraffe the hardest, but also took a shot at Milky. And then I'll finish up the turn. Uh, Glory-wise, not a lot of huge news. And cowboys making less now. The Phoenicians no longer have their water dominance. Um, they also don't have their progress dominance. They will next turn if they keep it up. Um, he got priority, Milky did, on on progress because it's, he was the start player. Um, Plains Americans, they still have their, their dominance, but that could change very soon. All really run has to do is start to, to spread outward. Um, let's see, Giraffe doing about the same. Run's doing about the same. Yeah, not not a lot of, it's it's been a pretty stagnant, stagnant in terms of points. The main news is that Cowboy got fewer, uh, but we can we can see some potential movement in terms of points. Um, he beat back in China. There could be a change in India. There could be a change here. Um, change with water. There's there's we're on the cusp of change, but it hasn't come into the numbers quite yet.